The present purpose is to work on how to decode the apparatus of the BHS. And we're going to work on an example from 2 Kings chapter 9 for the student who would like to follow along in their copy of the BHS. The particular example we're going to look at in this case relates to what appears to be an accidental scribal variation or an error. What the BHS does is it presents the text as uh, it is found in the Leningrad Codex. And the Leningrad Codex is the earliest of the complete Hebrew Bibles in the Masoretic tradition. And so um, what, what we find in the BHS then is in the margins there's notations, and so on the uh, side margins, we call this the Masora Parva. This is the small Masoretic notes that the Masoretes themselves wrote into the margins of the text. And then at the bottom, there should be the Masora Magna, but the BHS, rather than printing the Masora Magna here, just listed the numbers where one could find it in a separate volume, although... Um, not all of that got printed, so that's not terribly helpful. And then at the bottom of the page, this is the section we're going to look at. This is the critical apparatus where the modern editor of the BHS uh, includes uh, variations or suggestions for alternate readings. Uh, whenever the editor believes that there is um, either a mistake or if there's uh, ancient witnesses or the like to an alternate reading. The editor explains things to the reader. And I would suggest that um, the student probably wants to be more conservative and take less emendations than the editors, but the one thing that's very helpful about the BHS, because the editors were so anxious to offer emendations, this gives the student a good chance to see some irregularities and other difficulties in the text, and all of these stand as exegetical opportunities which can help us in teaching and preaching. Second Kings 9.15, there are four different um, places in the text where the BHS editor is offering some kind of comment. And these are marked by placing the lowercase letters of the English alphabet directly after the terms being commented on. And then in the lower portion of the page, in the apparatus, uh, those same letters then correspond to a series of notes where the editor is making various suggestions that need to be considered relative to the text. Our focus in this case is going to be on the first of uh, these notes, that is letter A, and that note for verse 15. So we can see that each of the different notes are divided from each other by a series of these vertical lines, and each is marked with the letters of the alphabet. Upon examination of the note, we find that it's actually abbrevi abbreviations that are in Latin, so it's going to take a little bit of work. The uh, letter itself stands for the word that's in the text, and then this note is in relation to it. And so what we'll need to do is take a look at the um, glossary for the sigla and the abbreviations that's found in the front of the text. Now, some of these are in Latin, and others are um, helpfully in English. So we have to um, sort of decode the message using uh, these glossaries. And when we read this verse, we notice right away there are three schwas in a row, and we're aware that there can't be three schwas in a row, so it's very unusual, we don't know what to do. And that's what this um, note is concerning. Now, to begin, we we've have this abbreviation uh, sick. So we'll need to look that up in the glossary, and we find out that 
sic is actually the Latin abbreviation for so or thus or the like. And then, of course, the uh, capital L refers to the Leningrad Codex. And then there's a comma. So the first part of this note says, reading A, it's not a typo in the BHS. Rather, that's what the Leningrad Codex says. That, as it's spelled there, is thus, see, the Leningrad Codex itself. And then as we continue to decode the note, we, re we see that uh, the editor says, after the comma, many or multiple manuscripts and editions of the Hebrew Bible have um, a shva under the bait, and then a hirik under the yod, then a shva under the zayin, and then this mark here chops off the rest of the word. That's the way the BHS does abbreviations. We see that in the BDB and other dictionaries as well. So then the rest of the word is as it stands up here. So the difference is only here at the beginning. And so the typo appears to be the two first um, vowel markers have been inverted. So the point of this note really is that there is a typo or a scribal error in the Masoretic pointing of uh, 2 Kings 9.15. And so in this case, this isn't an ancient problem or by the Sofarim, but this actually relates to a Masoretic mistake uh, in the medieval period. And so uh, we should probably read this the way it is in many other manuscripts and versions. Now, uh, what, what the student should get in the habit of doing is, whenever possible, translating the apparatus, that is, decoding the apparatus, but put it in very straightforward English. That is, in this case, we could say something like, the three consecutive Shavas in the Leningrad Codex, many Hebrew manuscripts, however, and many Hebrew editions have Yisrael, uh, and so putting it in um, straightforward English is probably the way to go. The student will find the normal English key to the Latin words in the front of any BHS, and then uh, Bratzman in his appendix has an especially helpful version of it.